Hi there, my name is Bo, and I'm doing this video to talk about environmental racism. I find that when I talk to a lot of different people about environmental racism and explain to, to them what it is, uh, a lot of them don't really understand what the topic is about, they don't really see it as a problem, uh, specifically when I explain the subject to white people. And this is understandable because it's somewhat of a foreign topic to them. Um, if you're not really experiencing something on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not going to be something that you really see as a problem. Uh, a lot of times when I speak to different white people about this topic, especially those who are marginalized themselves, they come from a poor socioeconomic background, for example, they tend to say things like, what makes this community different than my community? Uh, we're facing the same type of problems. Why are we focusing on um, these communities specifically? For example, if we're looking at African Nova Scotia communities or First Nations communities, why are we focusing on, on their, their, their problems? So what I found would be a useful, to useful tool is to kind of give a story about my background and uh, something that kind of you can relate to, and I can relate to at least, and kind of bridge this, this uh, topic. So when I was raised, uh, when I was a kid, I was raised uh, without a lot of money. My parents separated. Um, my mother was on disability. She was going back to school as well to try to build a better life for my brother and I. And, you know, as a result, we were raised without a you know, TV, color TV and all this, and we were raised in social housing, and by happenstance a lot of my friends were, uh, were I had a lot of black friends, I had a lot of uh, Middle Eastern friends as well. When you're a kid, you don't really notice there's much of a difference, you know, you see through a, a child's eyes, you don't really see there's a big difference between them and me, we're raised in the same situation, but as I got a lot older, I noticed that there was a difference that in the way that people would treat them versus the way they would treat me, treat me. even though they were in the same social group, even though we're coming from essentially the exact or very similar background, same socioeconomic uh, situation. This became especially apparent when I got into high school. When I was in high school, uh, this is when 9-11 occurred. A lot of my friends were Afghani from Afghanistan. And as a result, there was a lot of fear, a lot of misunderstanding, and there was a lot of bullying and confrontations. So a lot of the time when a confrontation would occur or a situation even in the classroom, something in general or bullying, the teachers, after speaking to my friends, they would then come to me and say, Bo, what actually happened in this situation? You know, what, what really occurred here? And it became apparent to me at that time that they were giving more weight to my voice and to my opinion than they were giving to my friend's opinion. They weren't really giving them that equal weight. And it became obvious that as a white person, in this society at least, in general, my voice has always given more weight. Now, this is the same type of problem that we face when we're looking at environmental racism. We have communities that their voices are not being heard uh, when they're facing environmental issues. So for example, if we look at uh, the historical context with African Nova Scotia communities, we had uh, waste disposal sites being built in their backyards. These waste disposal sites could have been built in any community really, and they weren't built in the white communities. Why is that? Because in the first place, the the government or the uh, organizations that are building the facilities didn't really value the voice of the uh, of the black communities. They really didn't see them uh, as being a group that could really approach the media or could really band together and really make you know stir up some stir up some controversy and really make this an issue. Whereas with the white communities, that would definitely be a problem uh, as, as well. This is very similar with what happened with First Nations communities. Now, if we fast forward to today, we have a very similar issue. We have still, of course, more facilities going in, but the other problem is now we're trying to get these facilities cleaned up. If we look at the white communities, for example, and we have, say we do have a waste dump in that area, and these groups go to the media, they go to, uh, to speak to the government, they're gonna get their voices heard, or at least they're gonna, it's more likely that they're gonna have their voices heard. You know, people, there's gonna be a lot more uh, media attention on the problem, and this problem is much more likely to be solved. You're gonna have, potentially environmental assessments going on fairly quickly. If you look at a black community or a First Nations community doing the exact same thing, the government isn't really giving that weight to their, to their voice, you know? They're not really looking at, the, at uh, finding a solution for these people. And it becomes much more apparent that there is some type of um, difference between a white community and a community of color, uh, especially in the way that the media approaches these issues and in the way that the government approaches these issues. So we may look at this and say, okay, well, this is a problem, now what do we do? As a white person, what do we do? It's not really just a problem 
their problem. It's not something we can say, okay, well, you know, it's their problem, let them deal with it, we have our own problems. The issue here is, is that the environment is shared by all of us, the community is shared by all of us, it's, it's one country, we're all part of the same community, and we really need to band together to really help solve the problem. Now, if we have a group that's marginalized and they're not having their voices heard, is it not our right, is it not our duty to lend our voices to them, to really give them, uh, help prop them up and really give them that help that they need to really get their voices heard? This is the essence of what a community is. We should be banding together. Why would you want the community to progress, the society to progress, you know, to build up, and to have one group left behind, to have a marginalized community present? Why would we want that? We wouldn't. So essentially, the idea of environmental racism is not just about identifying that there is a problem that different communities face based on the color of their skin and their culture, it's about recognizing that there is this problem and then really trying to come up with a solution. And the real solution comes from when the entire community gets together and really helps try, and to, pr try to press the government and try to press the media to pay more attention to these issues, to really get some, some environmental assessments going on, to really get some actual action taking place to help clean up these problems. So that's the essence of environmental racism.